I thought it would be interesting to do a video showing the antibody test and how that works and just talk a little bit about what we know about antibodies as it relates to SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. Um, and so I thought it would be fun and we're gonna do it together. And uh, I did a little test run and I'm finding it really difficult to get enough of the blood that is needed for the assay. So this is take two. Um, I'm just cleaning my finger right now with the alcohol swab and doing a new finger this time. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Lancet, it's a little teeny needle, I've cleaned it, um, and I'm gonna prick my finger. As a person terrified of needles, this is the part I hate the most, but I'm just gonna do it for the sake of science. We're gonna do it. Ah, hurts, and that's the point, because I'm cutting myself. All right, so gonna work to get out a big drop of blood here. Um, the antibody test is distinct from the test that many people are taking to see if they have COVID-19 or have SARS-CoV-2 actively. Um, the tests that most people are doing, like the drive-through tests, those are done with a swab into the nasal cavity usually. And what that is doing is it's detecting the genetic material of the virus. So that's detecting whether you have active virus present in your system. Um, the antibody test, on the other hand, is detecting whether you have proteins in your blood um, called antibodies that are produced by your body as a response to the viral infection. So what happens is your body comes into, um, becomes, you know, infected with SARS-CoV-2 and sees that virus and mounts an immune response. And the immune response is, has two waves. So the first wave is the development of antibodies called IgM. And when you have an IgM antibody response, it's usually a signal of very early inactive infection. So it takes about five to 10 days for your body to develop that. I'm just squeezing blood out of my finger, don't mind me. And um, the second phase of antibody production produces antibodies called IgG, which are more custom developed for the specific pathogen, in this case, SARS-CoV-2. So these antibody cassettes that look like this, they are made to detect both IgG and IgM. And what that can tell you is whether or not, you know, if you have antibodies at all, and if you do, whether or not it's from a recent infection, um, recent being like a couple weeks, the IgM fades pretty quickly. And as of now, we don't actually know how long the IgG antibodies last. And that's one of the somewhat problematic aspects of the value of these tests. We don't really know what it means if we have antibodies, other than that they're present in the blood. Um, preliminary work has shown that antibodies from recovered patients are able to neutralize the virus in something called a plaque assay, which is really the gold standard to test the function of an antibody against a pathogen. Um, so that's promising, but you know we don't, we don't know how long they last and we don't know that everyone who produces an antibody response has antibodies that neutralize the virus. It's really, um, you know, a case by case basis for now until we have enough data and enough people that we've studied to understand more deeply, you know, what we're actually dealing with and whether these antibodies are across the board able to neutralize SARS-CoV-2. So far, the results have seemed promising, but again, we just don't know for sure. And it's really hard to get this blood out of my finger. It's just, it's just not quite enough. I kind of want to go for it and just see. What do you think? Let's see if we can do it. All right, putting the blood in there. Okay. And immediately we're adding the diluent. All right, and now we wait 15 minutes. Hopefully I got enough blood. If not, I'll have to do it again, which will be my fourth finger prick. <laughs> Strong like bull, I can handle it. Um, this assay, you know, I should leave it flat for the assay, but um, you can see, you would be able to see if I held it up to the camera, which would make it less effective, that there's fluid that's now coursing down. This is called a lateral flow assay, 
And what it's doing is it's passing my blood over a membrane that's been developed with things that will bind to and attach specifically to the IgM antibody or the IgG antibody. So what will happen in 15 minutes if I have antibodies is I'll see a banded line that will show that I have um, antibodies for IgM or antibodies for IgG. Now, I had all of my symptoms for COVID-19 back in March. Um, my first symptoms started on March 15th and my illness lasted for 10 days. It had all of the classic symptoms, um, started kind of with a cough and I just didn't feel very well. A few days in, I got a pretty nasty fever and um, really challenging and awful body aches and splitting headache and that was for several days. Um, finally, after the aches and the headache, the aches and the fever subsided, um, that's when the breathing symptoms really started for me. So I had been coughing that whole time, but my breathing was okay. And in the second half of the illness, my breathing was really compromised. I found, and I was just incredibly fatigued. I, I can't emphasize enough how exhausting it felt. Um, I spent the entire day, every day for 10 days on the couch. And um, once the breathing challenge started, it was actually quite challenging to feel like I had enough oxygen even just laying down. So that was all really tough. And I did go to the hospital once and was tested for flu which came back negative and bacterial infection, which also came back negative. Um, and so given the circumstances, I operated under the assumption that I had COVID-19, but I was unable to get a test, so I don't actually know. Um, I'm looking now at this cassette and I can see a really strong, clear band in the control lane. So that's good. That means that this test cassette is working normally as it should. The membrane is intact. So we just need a little bit more time to determine whether or not I'll see antibodies for the IgM or the IgG. Fingers crossed. Um, so what else can I tell you about this? The timing is essential. Uh, the IgG is happens later. So an earlier active infection, that's when your IgM is really getting produced. It's the first five to 10 days after exposure that you see that. Um, and then after a couple weeks that, the levels of IgM start to wane. So because I was ill mid-March, I don't expect to see an IgM band. Now IgG, on the other hand, um, those are the custom produced antibodies I talked about. They come up around two weeks or so and, and they ramp up production. So if I had COVID-19, I would expect to see an IgG band here and hopefully a strong one. And um, the thing that's tricky about these tests is we don't know what it means to have the IgG antibodies. Unless someone drew blood from me and tested my specific antibodies in a plaque assay, I wouldn't know for sure that my antibodies are able to neutralize the virus, which is to say I may or may not be vulnerable to getting reinfected. Now, there haven't been any documented and confirmed cases of reinfection. There was some news out of South Korea that some folks had tested positive twice. That was recently confirmed to be due to faulty testing. So there are currently no examples of people who have been reinfected with the virus, which is really promising. And there's also been a number of studies showing that antibodies from patients who have recovered are neutralizing against the virus in the plaque assay. Um, and that, and there's been also a set of studies done in rhesus macaque monkeys that show that once they are infected and recover and the virus is reintroduced to them, so they're re-exposed to the virus, they don't get reinfected. So all of these things are really great pieces of information that suggest that immunity is at least in the short term somewhat stable. Um, that being said, I think the most important thing is to act conservatively and act as if you may be able to transmit the virus. Um, because you have antibodies doesn't mean you don't have active virus, especially early on in your disease. Um, we just don't know. And Regardless of if immunity makes you safe or not, you have to keep in mind that you can still be a vector of the virus. So if you're around other people that might have virus, active virus and active shedding, that can get on your clothes, on your skin, um, on your phone. You know, there are surfaces that can be contaminated that don't relate to your immunity. So if you were to be contaminated you know, on your surface and go spend time with someone who's vulnerable, there is a chance that you could infect that person. So I think it's important right now that we act really conservatively and behave in ways that assume that you have potentially the capacity to infect someone else. Um, and I don't wanna say this to instill fear, I just want people to 
take responsibility for the fact that, you know, each of us really has to be willing to act in a way that makes others safe. And um, that's what's most important. So this will be another 10 minutes or so. I'm not going to talk that whole time. Um, I will post the results later once it, once it, um, once the time has passed. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we get. <laughs>